as landlords, we've been through a load of shit over the last few years, including Brexit, interest rates, Section 24, and of course, COVID. But this could be the break we've been waiting for. To give some background, back in 2021, the government finished their two-year consultation period. And I go two-year consultation period because they clearly didn't think about a lot, if I'm completely honest. And the outcome of that is that every buy-to-let in the UK would need to be an EPC-C by 2025. And that's absolutely crazy. And of course, they would cap it at £10,000. So thanks for that. The reason I'm mocking it slightly is a majority of the UK's buy-to-let stock doesn't even have the ability to get to an EPCC. So really, it kind of just felt like a money-making exercise. But there has been an update that could really push it forward that I think you will be interested in. But before that, we need to break down what it even is. An EPC is an energy performance certificate. Essentially, it's saying, what is the energy performance of this house? And it starts from A and goes all the way down to, I think, G, but I've not actually seen a G. Now, really, you need to be a minimum E to rent out your property anyway. And what they've been looking to do is increase that to a C. Now, that's great for new build properties where you've got new materials. But if you think about Victorian stock that was built over 100 years ago, it would cost it's actually just not feasible, okay? It just wouldn't be right. And you have to bear in mind that if that makes up around 40% of the stock of the private rental sector, that's just gonna be wiped out. That's why it's not really feasible and there's a lot of other reasons, but I'm not gonna vent about it on this video. So the energy performance certificate is all about how much is energy preserved within the property? And this could include the light bulbs that you're using. It could be, are you using double glazing? Is it gas central heating? What type of insulation has it got in the walls, in the loft? What about tanking in the property? And a few other things that increase our, or reduce, I guess, our footprint on the overall environment, which of course I'm sure we would all agree is important but sometimes I think we need to look at the economic impact. Now, the economic impact is we've actually got some benefits. So for example, if you are have got a property with an EPCC, you will be, get better lending rates. So there's actually EPC certified mortgages out there that will reduce how much interest you pay. So if you didn't know that, definitely look into it because it usually saves about 1%, which isn't huge, but if you've got a portfolio of property, that does mount up. There's also benefits in terms of what bills people will be paying. This is good for if you own a HMO where typically you will be paying the bills, but also for your tenant in a buy to let. And you need to think if your tenant is saving money on gas and electric from heating the property, then that is going to put less stress on them and increases the odds of them not going into rental arrears. So even though it may not increase what rent you get, although it does do that slightly as well. It's more about actually qualitatively instead of quantitative is that you're able to actually make sure you're getting the money they need to pay in the first place. But the negative side is quite drastic, I feel. So even though they did put in something that would cap it at £10,000, which is great, but also shows how ridiculous it is, by the way. So for example, say you've got an EPCC and the only way where it can go is EPCE, you would technically still need to pay £10,000 trying your best to get it to an EPCC, even though someone that's certified has told you it will never be anything botany. Hopefully you can realize the ridiculousness of this. And what this does, by the way, is hurts the old age landlords. And old age, I don't mean old as in their age. I mean, they've been investing for 20, 30 years. They've got older stock as in Victorian stock. And imagine you've got 15 properties right now. They're all Victorian. They're all E's. And you absolutely cannot get them to a C. 
what would then happen is you would have to pay out £10,000 per property. That's £150,000. Like, who has that amount of money just left in their bank? Just, yeah, no problem whatsoever. Not a big deal. What would actually end up happening is people would end up going, it's not worth it. I'll just end up selling this off and using the money elsewhere, maybe to buy new property. Who knows? The other thing to factor in is that we're not in a place of abundance right now. Inflation is starting to taper, but interest rates are still high and we're likely to see some more movement on that in the coming months. I'll do some something on that in a separate video, by the way. So it's not like people are prospering right now. We've got a housing crisis going on already. Rentals are going through the roof because there's such an undersupply of buy-to-lets already, which by the way, if you own a buy-to-let is great great news for you. Not great for the tenant though, that we have to pass these costs on to. And that's the other thing is what happens all the time when there is a cost to the landlord is it has to get pushed on to the tenant. And I don't like doing that. And I think the perception is that every buy to let landlord is a multi multi millionaire. And it's just not the case. Okay. So it has to get passed on then tenants put more pressure on us. They don't like us because of it. And it trickles down. It's not the right time. But the great news is that Michael Gove, the housing secretary, agrees. And this was absolutely brilliant. In an interview with The Telegraph, and this isn't official yet, but it's in the making, is that he admitted that they acted too hastily, that maybe now is not the right time to introduce this. And that whilst as a country we do want to improve the efficiency of homes, and reduce the impact that it's having on property, maybe it was too much of a jump, number one. The cap was way too high, the £10,000 was too high, and the timing of it was a bit rushed. And so indicated that they're going to revisit the whole thing to number one, slow it down, maybe address it more in the future or give more time. Number two, go on that journey at a slower pace. So maybe, just predicting here, it goes from E to D. And then in a few years, five, 10 years, we look at what it would look like to go from D to C. And number three, reduce the maximum cost that goes on to the landlord of this. Now, a lot of this, I already spoke about when it came out a couple of years ago in another video I did, saying that I can near guarantee this would not come to fruition. I think not only will there be those three steps, I also think there's going to be the introduction of government grants in order to make this happen. So I'm really excited by this. This is a, a really powerful indication. And I don't think you should take this lightly, by the way, like it's not signed off. But bear in mind, it's never been signed off on the other side anyway. This is a great indication and a really great step for us landlords that they're taking it seriously, that they're not trying to bury us, they're not trying to hit us from all turns, and they're actually taking this with a really realistic approach. Now more than ever, there are more changes than I've ever seen in the last decade of property. You have to make sure you are up to date. And if you've been watching my videos and you're thinking, I need to take this further and I need to invest in my future, then that's one of the, my companies and that's what we do, Aspire Education. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna put a link in one of the comments and pin it to the top. If you can't see it, just put education in the comments and I'm opening up some spaces over the next couple of weeks for a free, completely free, one-to-one -one consultation session where we'll find out exactly where you're at in property, exactly where you want to get to in the next couple of years and really map out if we can even help you. So if that sounds like you and you really want to back yourself and go further in property, click the link or put education in the comments. If you have been watching these videos for a while and you're not a subscriber, you are missing out on a lot of really cool stuff. Make sure to tap that subscribe button and the notification bell to make sure you don't miss out. And if you could likely tap that like button, it helps me out a lot on the channel. And of course, I'll see you in the next video.